Yes, guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, FPL Coach here, also known as Coach Indy. Now, obviously, it's the international break at the moment, so there's no game weeks to review. However, today's video is all about wild cards. Now, I've got a couple of different variations here for you. One's a bit more risky, a bit more out there, maybe a bit more aggressive, a bit more attacking. One's a bit more template, sort of recognising what the fixtures are, the fixture swings, etc. So, I'm going to be running through those, the pros and cons, and also sort of the fixtures that we're targeting for those players. If you like this type of video please do drop it a like i really appreciate your support on the channel without further ado let's jump into the video okay so this is wild card option number one i would say this is a bit safe a bit conservative and a bit template at this stage of the season, I would say, going forward. So running through the team and giving you some benefits as to why this squad has been sort of assembled, if you like. So Foster and Sanchez as your goalkeepers. Now Sanchez could quite easily be someone like a Ramsdale or a Raya, someone around that price point. Diaz, Cancelo, Livermento, Rudiger and Trent as your back line. Now very much targeting the big boys there as the defensive players have done really, really well recently and the fixtures kind of swing for a lot of those teams as well. So it's quite sensible to target those types of teams, I would suggest. Saka, Brownhill, Rafinha, smith -Rowe and Salah as a midfield. smith -Rowe could quite easily be someone like Decore or um, Damari Gray. Brownhill could be someone like Billy Gilmore, for example, as well. Again, those price points. And then... Up front, Jimenez, Lukaku and Bamford. Bamford could quite easily be Antonio. Jimenez could be Tony, a downgrade to Tony, should I say. And Lukaku could be Ronaldo. All dependent on your, your budget of your squad and the makeup of your squad as well. So some of the reasons why I picked those players for now is Manchester City, they have the best defence in the league, statistically, in terms of goals conceded and expected goals conceded. So it, it's a smart play to sort of target two of their defensive assets. Now, I would only say... Edison, Diaz and Kevin De Bruyne are absolutely nailed in that team. So some people might question why Cancelo's in there, but I think there's enough upside there to sort of cover his potential, if that makes sense. So if he does play, he's likely to do really, really well and get a big haul, a 12, 15, 18 pointer potentially. But if he doesn't play, just make sure you've got the bench to cover it. That's what I would suggest. Um, so I think having Manchester City defence is quite smart. Now you could quite easily change Cancelo and have a, a 4.5 defender in there and then maybe upgrade um, Sanchez to Edison for example but there's not so much upside there in terms of Edison I would suggest um, Chelsea I think you could have a mixture of them so you've got Rudiger in there and you've got Lukaku so you've got one defensive and one attacker that's it again you could quite easily have a third you could quite easily have a Reese James as a sort of second defensive um, asset if you like but having a bit of coverage in both sides of the field I think is important Chelsea's fixtures going forward are fantastic probably the best um, in the league at, at the moment in terms of FDR rating uh, likewise at Liverpool, Liverpool, I think you've got a mixture in there in terms of attacking and defensive. So Trent is the obvious uh, choice, providing he is going to be fit for game week eight. Obviously, again, you'll have to um, watch press conferences for that one. However, even if he does miss game week eight, I think as of game week nine, potentially if you're playing your wildcard there, which potentially I could be as well, then you can just target him there as well. And then obviously Mo Salah is Mo Salah. I don't need to talk about him. He is the outstanding asset in the game. Um, Leeds attacking assets, I think other than uh, I would say Chelsea, I think their fixtures are probably the most favourable on paper. So having uh, attacking assets would be a quite smart play. Rafinha and Bamford are the two obvious choices. Now, again, got to sort of watch your space with the Leeds assets because um, Rafinha, obviously, the Brazilian news and the quarantine, that kind of thing, that could affect game week eight. And then Bamford, obviously, has a bit of an injury. We don't know if he's going to be fit. So I think... Again, if you're going to wait until game week nine, then maybe you'll have more news, more data to sort of analyse and make a decision. So I think maybe a hold on that one would be a smart play. However, you could still bring them in game week eight and bench them or to make sure you've got the bench to cover them if they don't play as well. So that'd be a smart play. I would avoid Leeds defence altogether because they just can't. I know they kept a clean sheet last game, but generally speaking, defensively, they're not great. They're missing a lot of bodies as well. Moving on to Arsenal assets as well in terms of the attacking stuff. So Saka and Smith Row, you could quite easily just have one of these. I think it might be smart to double up. I think a lot of players would have one of these two, but if you go double up and Arsenal do well, obviously it's a bigger bigger haul for you guys as well. And I think both of these are quite nailed, other than injury, I would suggest as well. So they'd be quite smart having those in. And also on the FDR rating, Arsenal are quite nicely placed there as well in the top five. So I would say Arsenal assets are quite smart. Now, some people might say, all about Arsenal's defensive assets? I get that. Three clean sheets in the last four in the league. 
is very, very good. But if you want to spread your funds elsewhere and also target the big boys, i.e. the Manchester Cities, the Chelsea's and Liverpool's in defence, it's difficult to get them Arsenal players in. So I think midfield would be the smart pro uh, smart play, should I say. And obviously you're never going to go to a Bam Yang at this stage because of his price point. OK, this squad also allows you to have flexibility in your selection in terms of game week to game week. So you could quite easily play a 1-3-4-3. You could quite easily play a one 3-5-2, you could also play a 1-5-2-3 for example, so there's so many permutations you could play. I'll suggest you're probably going to be playing your three strikers most weeks, obviously if there's an injury, suspension etc, you could just bench them for one week and then uh, bring in a midfielder or a defender for example, but you could quite easily play the whole back five for the next three, four, five weeks because the fixtures are very, very nice. In midfield, you're probably not going to be playing Brownhill ever, he's just there to a bit of bench fodder if you like. And then you can just sort of target the Arsenal boys in the certain fixtures, Rafinha on certain fixtures, etc. as well. So it allows you to have good flexibility. So the price point of this squad is very, very good as well, other than the goalkeeper department. Now, I know some people don't like spending loads of money on goalkeepers. I'm kind of in that boat as well, unless it's maybe a double game week or maybe a free hit, for example. So very much sort of having your funds reduced in that department, I think is a smart play. But elsewhere, in terms of defence, midfield and strikers, you've got covered every way. So Libramento, for example, is one side of the scale. That could quite easily be a Duffy, a Brandon Williams. But on this other side of the spectrum, you've got Trent, who could quite easily be a Robertson or a Van Dyke. Moving to midfield, again, Salah could be moved to, to Bruno, so you can jump on him. You can jump on Mane, for example. You know, if Salah gets injured, suspended, etc. They're the sort of things you've got to consider. And again, up front as well. So I touched on it earlier. Jimenez could be a Tony, for example. Lukaku could be uh, Ronaldo and Bamford could be Antonio. So you've got good price points to sort of cover um, you know, if certain players that get injured or out of form, you can sort of just switch to uh, a certain player that's sort of at that price point within that department, if you like. And the last thing is sort of targeting the fixtures. So we're going to go in a bit more detail shortly, but Man City's fixtures turn quite nicely. Chelsea's do as well. Leeds are very, very favourable and even Arsenal and Liverpool to a certain extent as well. So they're kind of the benefits to this squad. Just going to move on to some of the disadvantages. Right. OK, so let's talk about some of the disadvantages to wildcard option number one. Now, we spoke about Manchester City's assets in terms of defensive players now in this team there is actually no attacking players in terms of Manchester City so straight away Manchester City are the most free-flowing team in the league they score the most goals so straight away in terms of numbers you're putting yourself at a disadvantage now again you could say Pep Roulette etc and you want to try and avoid that I get that but also there is a massive upside to having some of their attacking assets as well so that'd be one downside to this squad okay moving on to Manchester United players again there's zero Manchester United players in this squad now, whatever you say about Manchester United, they can be really hot, they can be really cold, but on their day, they can be very, very good and score a handsome amount of goals. So, you know, you're missing out on potential big hauls from Ronaldo, Bruno, Cavani, Pogba, etc. Likewise, OK, defensively, they haven't been great yet, but at some point they're going to click. So you might miss out on some clean sheets there from Maguire, Varane, Luke Shaw, etc. Also, there's no Wolves defensive cover here. Now, they obviously play five at the back with the wing backs and obviously the goalkeeper there as well with two sort of screen and sliding as well. Granted, they are playing a bit more attacking, but still they've got some good defensive numbers and they have been quite solid, generally speaking. Haven't conceded loads of goals when they have conceded. So maybe you could target a Wolves defender, a Cody, a Semedo, a Marcel, for example, as well. And also the budget distribution um, is very, very high in the defensive area as well. So... Generally speaking, you wouldn't necessarily spend this sort of money in a defensive area. However, it's a big chunk there. There's a good part of sort of maybe 28 million sort of pounds in the defensive area there. It's quite a big chunk. So maybe that's an area where you can maybe redistribute that into midfield and make sure you've got some attacking assets um, covered in terms of midfield assets, for example. So they're kind of the disadvantages to this squad. Just going to move over to wildcard option number two. OK, so this is wildcard option number two. It is way more attacking, way more aggressive, uh, looking to be on the front foot, if you like. So straight away, you can see there is triple Manchester City attack. Run through this squad, and then I'm going to talk about some of the benefits. OK, so you've got Foster and Ramsdale, which are two goalkeepers. Cody, Duffy, Livermento, Rudiger and Christensen. So you've got double Chelsea defence. Midfield, this is where it gets exciting. You've got Grealish, Foden and De Bruyne, triple Manchester City. That's right, triple Manchester City. Smith Rowe and Sadio Mane and then up front you've got Tony, Lukaku and Scarlett as your sort of bench fodder if you like so straight away let's get into it triple Manchester City attack now the benefits are absolutely huge they score the most goals in the leagues they have done for a number of years under Pep Guardiola often score fours five sixes in multiple games in a row especially the home fixtures so on the day if these three do start 
and Manchester City go big, I score five or six. These are quite easily get ten point hauls each, and that's thirty points in your in your total already. And you're probably only looking at another thirty to forty points amongst your last eight players. So that is the benefit of having triple matches at City. We'll talk about some of the disadvantages a little bit later on, but the huge there is huge upside and huge scope for big hauls for Manchester City players going forward, looking at their sort of fixtures over the next sort of seven, eight game weeks, if you like. There is triple matches at City in this squad as well. Double defence, one attack. Now, this quite easily could be double attack and one defence. But I do think, as you've got no matches of City, defensive coverage, it might be smart to sort of have a double Chelsea, if you like, just to make sure you do cover those clean sheets that do come in. They will come in regularly for Chelsea over this period. Again, you've got Lukaku up top as well. So, absolutely fine. Um, you've also got a Liverpool tackle. You've got Sade Mane in there. We haven't got Mo Salah, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, your budget distribution is covered in various areas. So, you've got... Your attack, for example, you've got Lukaku, you've got top end there. You can quite easily jump on to Ronaldo, and Brian, you've got the funds. Again, in midfield, you've got De Bruyne, you've got Mane. You can quite easily get to a Mo Salah, a Bruno Fernandes, for example. And likewise in Chelsea, OK, you haven't got quite got the budget for a Trent or uh, a Robbo, but you might have the budget for a Cancelo or uh, a Van Dijk, for example. So the budget is very much distributed quite well, uh, especially in the defensive area. And then the last thing is talking about the fixture swing as well. So Chelsea and Man City, their fixtures change massively. And Liverpool, Liverpool, to a certain extent, and even Arsenal have nice fixtures. So having those those assets from those clubs, really, really critical going forward. If you want to get some big hauls, say from game week 8 to 15, for example, massive points available if you get the right selections at the right time. OK, so let's talk about some of the disadvantages to this squad. So obviously having triple matches to City attack. Um, the pet roulette is massively in motion at the moment. So, again, the, the upside is you could get you know ten point hauls for each of these in any game week. But the opposite side is they might not even start. They might not even come off the bench, and you'd be with zero or one pointers or two pointers, for example. You know, so that's a, the pet roulette in terms of attacking assets. So you've very much got to be able to cover that in terms of your rest of your squad, i.e. the likes of maybe a Smith Rowe coming off the bench or an Ivan Tony, for example. So if you're happy with that pet roulette and you've got the squad to cover it. This would be a really ultra sort of attacking move if you like and could you could reap the benefits massively going forward having no Manchester United players could be an issue as well now you know Man United could be hot one week could be cold another what you can't deny is they can go big they can haul big as a team and individually as well so having no assets could also be an issue the likes of Bruno, Ronaldo, Rashford when he comes back maybe Sancho, Greenwood going forward and even some of the defensive assets you know when they've got the defence sorted likes of Luke Shaw, Maguire could pick up big points touched on earlier as well no Mo Salah and there's also no Trent as well so you would probably say those two Liverpool players those two assets are the two you'd most likely have in your squad and there's none of them in there so could be very very dangerous because they could quite easily haul 10 15 20 point hauls and that's both players I'm not just talking about Mo Salah that's Trent as well on his day you could quite easily go and get clean sheet three bonus points a goal and an assist as well no problem so that's the issue run with not having those players and those Liverpool players in your squad. Um, there's no Manchester City defensive coverage. Touching it earlier, they've got the best defensive numbers in the league in terms of expected goals conceded, etc. So having no one there wouldn't be the smartest decision in the world. Maybe having a Diaz to cover that, just to have some sort of defensive coverage would be the smart play. And also, it just leaves me 0.7 million in the bank. Um, so, you know, if I wanted to jump on certain plays, it doesn't give me much movability to sort of jump on certain plays, i.e., you know, maybe changing Rudiger to a Trent, for example, doesn't give me that flexibility to jump on certain plays in one move. Different matter if I'm making maybe, a, you know, two transfers or taking a hit, that's obviously a lot more possible, a lot more achievable, if you like. OK, so let's have a look at some of the players that were chosen in both the wildcard teams. Let's have a look at their fixtures from game week 8 to 14. So we're starting off with Brighton, Sanchez and Duffy. We've got Norwich away, which is a nice fixture to start off with in game week 8. City and Liverpool, you'll probably want to avoid those. But then you've got Newcastle, Villa, Leeds and West Ham. So you're probably looking at some clean sheets and possible attacking returns if you've got the likes of Neil Mope. Moving on to Manchester City, Diaz, Cancelo, De Bruyne, Foden, Grealish, the list goes on, Mares, Torres, etc., Jesus. Burnley at home is a fixture you probably want to target as a potential captain choice. Um, I think the last three or four times, maybe five times, they've played that fixture, City have won 5 0. So there's going to be goals in that game. Brighton, Crystal Palace at home, the Manchester Derby will be tricky, Everton, West Ham and then Villa. So some indifferent ones in there, but it is Manchester City, they score goals and will keep clean sheets in there. Moving on to Liverpool, 
Um, so the likes of Salah, Trent, Mane, etc. You've got Watford away, nice fixture. Manchester United away would be tricky. Brighton, West Ham, Arsenal at home, Southampton at home, and then you've got the Merseyside derby. So there's a bit of red in there, but it is Liverpool. They're in good form. They've got everyone fit and healthy at the moment. So um, you're back there, assets to do well. Chelsea, again, on paper, we touched on it earlier. They've got fantastic fixtures going forward and their fixtures massively swing. So you're looking at Lukaku and any of the defensive assets like Reese James, Aspilicueta, Rudiger, Christensen, etc. Brentford away, Norwich at home, Newcastle away, Burnley at home, Leicester away, Man United at home and then Watford away. So again, fantastic fixtures. I see a green in there. There's going to be clean sheets. There's going to be loads of goals. So jump on board there. Likewise with Leeds, um, probably didn't big them up enough actually. Lots of Rafinha and Bamford. They've got Southampton at home, Brentford away, Norwich at home, Leicester home, Tottenham away, Brighton at home, uh, Brighton away, sorry, and then Crystal Palace at home as well. So a lot of nice fixtures. Um, a, a way to look at it maybe at those types of assets is if you bring, you know, one or two of them in, for example, from game week eight to the end of uh, game week 14 and say, you know, if we get three, four, five returns from them, would you be happy? I suggest you would be. So that's one way of looking at it. Arsenal players, Saka, Smith Rowe, even Ramsdale, Ben White, etc. They've got Crystal Palace at home, Villa at home, so a couple of nice fixtures at home. Leicester away, they'll be in and around Europe, so Leicester will be rotating some players, might be some fatigue there. Watford at home, Liverpool away will be a tricky game, Newcastle at home, and then Man United away. So a little bit of red towards the end. Southampton and the likes of Liveramento. Um, Leeds at home, Burnley at home, so a couple of nice home fixtures. Watford away, Aston Villa at home, Norwich away. So four of the next five, fantastic. Tricky Liverpool game away from home and then Leicester at home. So again, generally speaking, um, Southampton's fixtures are very, very nice. You want to be targeting those. And then lastly, you've got Wolves fixtures and Jimenez and Cody. Aston Villa away, Leeds away, Everton at home, Crystal Palace away. Probably some tricky uh, fixtures on paper there, but then you, you've got your green coming up next. So just touched on Crystal Palace there. West Ham at home, Norwich away, and then Burnley at home. So towards the end, a lot more green there, a lot more beneficial in terms of the fixtures. So generally speaking there, if you are targeting those assets, there's a lot of green um, in there. A bit of red as well, and a little bit of grey, but generally speaking, those are the assets you probably want to be targeting between game week 8 and 14, if you are going to be using your wildcard during that period. It might be use it um, over the international break, going into game week 8. You might use it in you know, game week 9, for example. Wait one more week if you like. But if you are brave enough and you've got a really good strategy and you can hold off, maybe using your wildcard in game week 14 to 21 would be a smart play. So the reasons for that, and maybe planning forward, is Man United and West Ham's fixtures, they massively swing. Um, so the likes of Fernandes, Ronaldo, Sancho will be firing, hopefully then Rashford, Green with the likes of Luke Shaw, Maguire. All these players will have a lot more data uh, and the teams will probably be firing on different cylinders at that point as well. So you know there'll be a lot, be a lot more cohesion within Man United, for example. West Ham might have qualified for Europe, so they'll be concentrating on the league a bit more. So lots of Antonio, Ben Rama, Cresswell, for example. And then Manchester City and Liverpool, their fixtures continue to be nice. So you might want to tweak it one or two. So you, you might have a Grealish, you might think, right, I'm bringing Torres now. You might bring in a Jesus, for example. Or you might want to hold on to those players, for example. So... Just bear that in mind of when you want to use your wildcard, is it between game week 8 and 14? Have you used it already? And obviously in that case, your plan has got to be really, really on point. Or do you hold up until weeks uh, fixtures from game week 14 to 21? So that's kind of my thoughts on when you should be using a wildcard if you haven't used it already. There you have it, guys. That is my wildcard draft video for you guys. A couple of different types of drafts. One really aggressive, one really sort of looking to sort of make some grounds in terms of the rankings. Fortune favours are brave if you like in that respect. One bit more template, focusing on the fixtures um, and playing it a bit more safe if you like. So let me know in the comments below which of the two wildcards you prefer. And if you've got a better wildcard, please pop that in the comments also. Last thing to sort of mention is if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. It does help the channel grow a little bit further. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Please do drop it a like. Like I said, leave a comment as well. Any thoughts are really appreciative. I will try and reply back to as many people as possible. And we'll see you next time.